day after day, even from the yeah. MLBB men's, that Fair. you know the initial control of tempo from the early game, from the first turtle, from the second turtle, is so important mm. that maybe waiting till the third one would take a little too much time. You lost out too much already. Yeah. It's no. reactive. Another thing I'm just waiting for is uh, someone please start putting fighters in the mid lane if possible. <laughs> Not all the time, obviously, but like just a very tailored. Still trying to consider like what those tailored scenarios are for a fighter in the mid, but just anything that can fast clear. Like that's one of the reasons why at some point glue in the mid lane be became a surprise pick because of just how fast it clears to level one. Once you hit level two, you annoy the jungle of the opposing side, usually the purple side buff. So that's one thing that uh, hopefully teams remember and consider as an option to put a fighter in the mid just so that you can pressure the early game rotation of your opponent. My favorite mid lane fighters were Cho, Terizla, Martis, Fa we've seen Fanny, but it doesn't follow the same uh, mantra as lane bully. I think that's the yeah. best kind of mid laner. I don't even think about invading, don't even think about uh, the pokes. Just as long as you can lane bully, yeah. you push him out. And again, we throw back the uh, hero we mentioned earlier, the Akai. You can count him as a mid lane fighter. Why not? Uh, we've seen uh, some content creators use Suyo as a mid laner. The amount of uh, ungodly burst that he's able to put out there. Yeah. And how mobile he is compared to most mid laners. Yeah, I wonder if that might end up becoming an evolution of the mid lane role. Where in... I mean, the map in MLBB is much smaller and the mid laners for the longest time has always just been about... Uh, clear wave fast, help us in the jungle or help, yeah. us, to help us in the lane. Might evolve into something becoming more of a dueling uh, one by one on one. If ever at that point you see assassins and the uh, fighters going into the mid, but uh, with the presence of the roam and uh, what it's like as a role, it might be more of a very niche pick than a normal strategy. Hey, Gushin counts as an assassin. We've seen yeah. him in mid for a spell, so that that th th there's some uh, ground to stand on when you think about it like that. Sinis use Ruby. In the mid lane, I think a couple months ago. That's under the global ban thing, no? No. Just, just because she wanted to. In the qualifiers. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that doesn't sound so weird. That sounds doable. Yeah. Uh, Cause you hold mid so well. Yeah, she counts as a fighter too. Like, yeah. you know. But my my big question is right. If you put these fighters into the mid lane, how would you make up for the lack of? Magic damage. I mean, assuming that it's a Ruby or a Terizla. It's either in the jungle or the gold. That means you either have a Julian or a Nathan or the Harren. That's usually the case. Or a Lunox. Oh, yeah, or a Lunox. So, if it's a fighter in the mid, then they will have a source of hard carry magic damage in the gold or the jungle. Usually the gold. But that's, that's what's the option for the gold lane now? We don't see Natan anymore. Maybe a little bit too late game. Lunox? Yo, if that's, that's the case, option. oh Harith, no, right? Harith, yeah, Harith is there. If that's the case, uh, still pick up the Nathan. I mean, Nathan isn't—he's synonymous with uh, teams deciding to, hey, we're probably gonna lose the early to mid. Let's just pick up this hero so that mid to late. It's uh, so good for the wave here and all that. But excuse me, that's not all Nathan is for. Get a good laning phase, help him out, get wins on the map, and he's also great as an early to mid option. That is still most definitely there. So, if we see a Nathan, I wouldn't want to default into immediately thinking like that's a team already like laying on their back a little bit and going, all right, yeah, we're gonna get you in the second half. That's true though, because we've seen a ton go full item, well, in, in certain competitions and tournaments, of course, but under 10 minutes. Holy yeah. Crystal, under 10 minutes. Oh, that, that's uh, more of a circumstance of the opponents not bearing down on the weakness mm. of a Nathan in the early. But that's what I think ma what makes Nathan so good is his kit protects himself so well. You could, you could say that the Nathan is independent. Uh, sure, you want to have some good peel, some good CC. If you're lucky, a Matilda, when you play a Nathan lineup, but you uh, slap on a Purify, and a very good game IQ, game sense player, and you'll see a Nathan almost go undead, uh, go, go almost uh, unkilled all game long. Un undeaded. Undeaded. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Un unalive. Un <laughs> un un yeah. Okay. Impossible to unalive. <laughs>
it looks like, ladies and gentlemen, that we do have a slight technical issue right now that we are trying to solve once again. We do want to make sure that everything is good and dandy before we head into this next match. Best of one. You want to make sure that things are good and right. Because, again, we want the best viewing experience for you guys at home as well. Other than, of course, the players on the stage and the experience that they're going through right now. We can go into the deep annals of uh, the meta if you'd like. I'll tell you about how uh, Bane is the ultimate uh, protector of the meta. Like he, he you have 10 minutes, go. <laughs> <laughs> That's not enough. That's not, not enough. En not enough. That's not enough. Look, I, I, I dug into my social media and I saw that I was already part of the cult of Bane four years ago. Four years ago? Mm -hmm. Wow. Sharing like these weird... Like this is before he, he was cute. This is before he was cool. I think just right after... He stopped looking like Davy Jones. Is when I became uh, the the chapter leader of the cult of Bane in the Philippines. Wait, really? That far back? Yeah. Four years ago. Yeah. That's cool. So it's, I'd say uh, talking like pro scene relativity. MPL season seven. Okay. What you want to talk to now? us about it? Oh yeah, sure. Bane. Uh, yeah. The, the fact that he's a hero that is both labeled as a fighter and a mage allows for such creativity not just in the mechanics but also in the macro and that's why i think i'm in love with Bane. it's because i'm a macro kind of guy I, I know that my fingers aren't as fast as a 50 year old kids so i'm gonna make up with it fast fingers. by knowing how you, you would know how, how much i can lean in uh no he used to coach yeah you used to coach yeah he used to coach I, like, MLBB coach very and other mobile 50 year old juggler in the past yeah i don't doubt it yeah see so anyways back to my story so the Bane allows for you to know how much space to play with, how power spikes work, how CC works, and positioning. All in a single hero, those all come up for you. Yeah, and again, we're talking about the Bane here because Sula does play a Bane. It's recorded in, you, in, the, in the European qualifiers. Mm -hmm. Sula plays that hero, not just once. It wasn't a one-off. Played it multiple times in the tournament. Three uh, at the least, if I'm not mistaken. I would, I would so that's one of their go-to picks. I would love to pick her brain about how she sees Bane. Because again, from one Bane main to another, uh, I can name a few off the top. MP the King, Wise, Sula. See? <laughs> this is a very exclusive club we're talking about. Yeah. That's true. That's true. Who's, who's, who's in those uh, Bane ambassador? I think Kyrie's picked it up a few times. Just a few? Does Bane not pop up in Indonesia that often? I think Super Ken? All I right. think Miracle Tron would know. See, uh, not, it's, it's, not, it's not as much, it's not a dedicated pick for him. I don't think it's as mechanically demanding as Super Ken would like. As I know Super Ken, Super Ken likes the Lancelots, Super Ken likes the Lings. But I think I had a conversation about Bane, I think with Renmar backstage, was it with you? Hey, why, why was I not part of this conversation? Please. I don't know. I don't I, maybe know. you were sleeping. I don't, know what, I don't know what I'm Rachel's sure. referring to, but what is it? <laughs> about the Bane, I was wondering, why why don't we see the Bane that often anymore? I don't know, okay, that, that wasn't me. I don't that wasn't you? Who did I have that conversation <laughs> yeah, with? I did know. I have it with myself we, in my head? <laughs> we have not had a conversation about Bane <laughs> really? up until this, today's broadcast, Who Rachel. Who did I cast with? Oh, wow, amazing. But anyway, uh, <laughs> as I was talking to Mr. X about this, uh, he mentioned about the Bane severely requiring something like the Matilda. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no. That was on desk. Yeah, that was on desk. That, that was, was on desk? Yeah, okay, yeah. that was me. Not that necessarily was why he can't fit to the meta or why he's not showing up as often, but just his reliance on the lineup. His yeah. reliance on a draft that will allow for him to cover for his weaknesses. But I, we have seen it. We have seen a Bane be drafted alongside a Hylos and a Matilda and still lose. Mm. It still happens. Why? How? When you're not able to use space well. There's a small window wherein the Bane cannot be protected by the Hylos nor be protected by the Guiding Winds that a little Hayabusa or a Link can get through and, you know, stop whatever the lineup is doing. And I'll be honest, a lot of lineups have the Bane as a main core or a secondary core. So if you get rid of the Bane, then all you have is the gold lane. So let's see if Bane pops up. Ladies and gentlemen, as we get into the drafting phase for match number three in this best of one minutes. series between Ukraine and Mongolia. Maybe, maybe we'll get a chance to touch on that uh, later on, Leo, as Ukraine is taking quite some time here for that first ban. I wish someone just picks a Leo more. 
At this point, I'm just like... That's, that's, that's a hill you're gonna die on. Leomord <laughs> Bane. Alpha Suyo, forget about it. There was a world where Leomord Bane were legit picks. Yeah. Uh, 2021. And a little bit even earlier this year. Hey, I will die on that hill that the trinity of the utility is always going to be Leomorn, Bane, and... Who's the, who's the other guy? Alpha! There we go. That's what I'm waiting oh, for. Oh, these are, these are fighter utilities. Yeah, the fighter Not type. tanks. Nah, no, not tanks. That's not right. Tanks. Fighter yeah. utilities. I, I'm with you. I agree with you. Right, right? Chip doesn't see the light of day once again here from the side of Mongolia. Gets banned out. Poor guy. Yeah. Oh, Chip is one of the reasons why, as well, Bane can't uh, be part of the meta. He's so easily jumped. Mm -hmm. there's, there's nothing that Bane can do to protect himself. Sure, you can pop a deadly catch, but that'll only stop the inevitable. Could also be one of the reasons why... Um, I feel like as a Bane, there's very little you can do to a Cho that you don't see coming. Mm -hmm. Flaker, Jeet Kune Do, you get kicked. There's nothing you can do. Best you can do is at the end of all the animation locks. Mm -hmm. You just throw out your sharks and hope you survive long enough. Yeah. Funnily enough, uh, I have beaten the Cho one on one. Guy by the name of uh, the King of Taunting. I think you know him. Ripo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> MSC twenty twenty three. Wait, did that so actually epic. happen? It did. Okay, I believe that. That's quite epic. <laughs> <laughs> All right. What's and not so epic is Matilda being banned out here. Oh yeah, so they're, they're, they're no doing the homework. And did, did, did we not read it right? Did we not yeah. say that? These two teams would play, what, 80-90% to the meta. And none of these bands are bands you would not see in a men's finals, in a men's playoffs. And there's a Suyo. Ban. For the alpha. Ban the Alpha. Give the Jushin to Ukraine. And then, no. Okay. This should be an easy pickup of the Alpha for Ukraine now. Do it, Sula. So that the Bane doesn't have to be picked now, you can pick the Alpha! If the Alpha doesn't get through here, I will be surprised because uh, usually the Fovius either gets slotted in here. If it's not the Fovius, it's the Edith. If it's not the Edith, it's... It could be the Harith, honestly. So or Ukraine in particular. Rush it right away? I don't know about that. Oh, Cho, sorry, Cho is also like a priority. First pick. Cho and Alpha. Cho and Alpha. I, although I believe... Uh, uh, Kassapok isn't a uh, Cho user just yet, so go back to one of the old uh, favorites of uh, Heroes Against Rust. They get the Kali. Hey, you know who cancels Kali's like, heal really well? Bane? You know, I feel like because of how many times we talked about Bane in the past 10 minutes, <laughs> if the Bane doesn't show up, I will be immensely disappointed. It should be the Alpha here. Yeah, right? Alpha Gatot. Alpha Gatot. Yeah, that'd be perfect. The name Bane nothing anymore like we've said it over and over <laughs> again like, what is that even if it's not alpha they could even be valentina gato kacha that makes sense uh, a lot more or room hilda. for flexibility no but it looks like they're gonna go for hilda now you alpha all the more all the more you got alpha yeah alpha alpha would be so good right if yeah. you don't pick up alpha then maybe it's just not in the pool these two picks already are enough for me to say, yeah, I love Bane, but not like this, not not this much. Yeah. Because that Hilda's gonna be in your face, minute one. Gadot can jump you. Good stuff. You gotta make like Elsa, let it go. Mm. Mid lane pick. Uh, I want someone to pick up a Valentine in the very first phase right now if they can. Uh, right now, it just looks good for both. Get that control, quick scaling, quick burst. There's a Valentina Kali together, great. Hmm? There it is. They're not the Valentina, but they go Alpha High Loss. Very beefy lineup. And not a lot of answers right now in this meta to actually cause problems for those three snowballing and ending the game in less than 13 minutes. But it also eliminates the flex that both the Khalid and the High Loss should have had. Oh, we don't know. We don't know. Huh? They can switch up. Who's going where? Oh, yeah, but other than that. Yeah. Other than that, yeah. Uh, it's just. These two ladies are respecting each other. Uh, these two teams of ladies are respecting each other to the point of we'll set up our front line first and then we'll commit to the cores later on. So this is not going to be a fun Nolan game. I was no, gonna uh, say it. Uh, uh -huh. If this Nolan has a good time in the jungle, they picked an amazing mid laner that will make them struggle. Hell, they picked a Valir or a Veil. Yeah, I'm not saying Aurora. I'm not saying any of the mid laners that we're used to. It's either because they picked a super surprising Valir and Veil pick that will just be constantly difficult to get into. So the Nolan's happy. 
But the Lunox does get banned here, so Mongolia have done their homework. You mentioned Amaterasu and her Lunox. Yeah. And they're gonna deny that away. So the other two picks that we've seen her utilize from the qualifiers would be the Farsa as well as the Zask. Oh, the Zask would be pretty good for Ukraine. Yep, Nolan can pop it. Yeah. Uh, at the site of the Hildar the Gatot, just go into the Dominator's Ascent. Yeah, that's Is rough. it still as strong a laner though? No. Uh, He's been on the decline. Yeah. It's a steep slope that Zaska slid into. But in the face of these specific three in the first half of uh, Mongolia's draft, I think it's worth it. Yeah. Now look, they just decided to lead the band the carry. Of course, carry being the go-to answer for the really tanky front line. Mongolia's running out of options and will actually make this lineup of Ukraine struggle in terms of burst. Good. Not gonna lie, I like this uh, Sicilian band. Mainly because like, if you added a Sicilian, if you, with already those three heroes, the Sicilian is untouched. And uh, Khalid, Hylos, Alpha can take all the damage in the world. They just need to buy time for the Sicilian to be able to hit what he can hit with the Bats Feast and all of the combos he has with Impact and Claws. Yeah, the, the, the Nolan would be the only closest thing to friend. Yeah. But then the Nolan, that would mean the Nolan would put him himself in danger just to pick that good banner by, by Mongolia, honestly. And you can make like the recently crowned champion of the men's division go just and play man to man. Oh, in this case, woman to woman. Just send that high loss over to hunt for the Nolan. You ain't touching the Sicilian. Yeah. It's going to be very difficult. Ukraine with the carry being banned out as well. So what do they go? Oh, they respect one one here. They take that here away from Mob Psycho. Mm -hmm. Our other options are the Melissa and the Tan. Do any of these to fit with their lineup? I think Mongolia would not uh, be so bad with another time. They go Aurora, yeah, their lineup already is going to be playing for the later portion of the game. Yeah, they'll you protect that gold yeah. laner. Ukraine can go full dive and just go ahead and pick up Nathan now. If it's not going to be the Nathan, uh, excuse me, Harith. Yeah, it's not bad out. It's still wide uh, out in the open. Paired up with the Harith and the. Uh, if they go Harith, can Mongolia go Melissa? That's and not going to be enough damage. You're in danger from the Nolan and the Melissa. Yeah. That's what's stopping me personally if, if I were to draft here that, that Harrod thing. I kind of like the Nathan for them. Take it away. Steal it away. Yeah. There's a Valentina. <laughs> Finally. Doing it for you. Okay, they go for Moscow, so the lineup's a little bit more merciful. But yeah, right now for the lineup of Mongolia, it's they might actually slowly lose this through sheer will macro. Uh, the split push provided by the Moscow. I love how Ukraine, despite coming from the relative west, uh, northwest that is, they're, they're playing like a Southeast Asian team. Yeah. Uh, I'm expecting the output to be very close to, you know, the great macros of uh, the likes of Team Philippines and Team Malaysia. Right, so what's draft. the final pick for Mongolia? I think Moscow is great too, other than of course the ability for him to play the macro game, but also the fact that it's a little bit less vulnerable compared to the other gold laners against yeah. things like the Hilda, the Nolan Ooh. as well. Oh, we talked about the Ixia earlier on, yeah. and the Ixia shows up. What do we think about this pick? Well, I mean, it can do well in terms of the team fights. Uh, Ukraine needs to run into a lot of things just to reach that Ixia, but that's the thing. They can afford to do that. Uh, that lineup is built to just run through things willingly take damage because they can dish uh, damage back. Um, I'm leaning towards a lineup of Ukraine here. That's a uh, twofer. I think Mongolia have good payoff uh, if Ixia can plant herself well and uh, if the Nolan can dive in and disrupt the formation that Team Ukraine want to approach with. But execution-wise, Ukraine are, are just so sound. It's yeah. hard to fail with a lineup like this. So with that, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to head over to the game. Best of one between both of these teams. Mirko, Naisu, are you ready? You know what? We are ready. We are born ready. We're filled up. We're satiated. We're ready to go. Great job on the panel, guys, for breaking Thank that you, down. Panel. We're ready to get into this game. Interesting drafts, you know? Very. You know, we got this, the Ixia pick coming out as well, despite there being quite a lot of dives on the other side of the map, right? So obviously, you're going to have to be very, very careful with the Ixia pick. All you need to do, scale up to the mid to late. So far, nice zoom. In this meta, it isn't really too safe to play the mid to late game, right? It's more safe to just go for the early game. But let's see. Maybe they can get it done this time. 
I was I was thinking you were leaning towards, you know, it's not safe to play the Ixia, man. I, that, yeah, I mean, that's true, too. She's a little bit of a gla She's always been a glass cannon. She's a glass cannon. You just have to fully peel for her. And the thing is, there's a lot of dive on the other side. Even the Moskov, right? There's a way to blink past your front line to get to the Ixia. And then with the Khalid, with, with the high lows, just yeah. so many tools for them to dive onto Five Mongolia. Whole lot of tools that can be into play Smash here. Them. Now, once again... Welcome to the land of dawn here. It's a best of one between Ukraine and Mongolia. Hey, hey. See which team can get the footing, especially in the early game. It's always what we want to pay attention to, especially looking at the lineups here. Even the emblems now that we get a little bit of a preview. And just to throw it out there, you know, you are going to see some names, of course, here for Ukraine. I believe they, you know, different from what we saw on the rosters, but it's nonetheless same players. A little bit of different name, but yeah, I want to point out the double revitalize for Mongolia right now. They've got it for the Gatacontra and they also have it for the Hilda, right? So the, part of this is all part of the plan. You want to go for the sustain, you want to go for the healing. I'm not going to land at that uh, taunt for now though. Mm -hmm. Playing it a bit slow. The Nox of Belt rotating forward. Will go for the target. Oh, the freeze too. Revitalize already utilized, but it's not going to be able to save Kaksa. It's a kill first blood over to Mongolia early on. Okay, so, and just so we can clarify, you see two Saudi esports, right? I just want to go ahead and throw this out there. For Ukraine, this is Mali, and then over on the other side, you have Nika. So, just to put that out there, I think that was part of the, of course, the tech things they had to figure out before we jumped into the game. So, uh, that being said, again, first blood going in the hands of Mongolia. They can work with the lead that they've got. Again, we have to pay attention to the jungle presence also, right? The Nolan versus the Alpha. Very typical matchup. We're looking to set things up here too and go through this. Again, there it is. Lose again. This some of the high lows. Again, they're just gonna take Kaksa down two times now. The roamer has been the main target for Mongolia. And again, the burst, they got it. That's the burst I was talking about. You know, it's always it's always surprising when we see this, especially with you know Nolans when they pop up, the amount of burst damage that that does, even the fracture able to make plays like that. And then you, you throw in the fact wow. you have an Aurora. You know, you can actually just lock people down by freezing them. So this is going to give a good opportunity for them to go ahead and start up this turtle. Cox is going to give this information, and she's going to go ahead and back out. We also have here once again. I think it's just going to be a free objective, though, because of the lead that Mongolia has been able to get themselves. They get the first turtle here. So, Miracle, when we look at Ukraine, you know, what what is their timings with this lineup, and how do they find their footing in the early game. If I'm being honest with you, they should be the ones starting things off with the early to mid. We were talking about this, right? With the yeah. Ixia pick. I understand that the Aurora and the Nolan will definitely be able to hold off the Alpha, but the thing is, I don't know, they, they, it feels really like the Khalid should be able to be more active in the early game. Let's see here, purple buff already kind of threatened away. It's gonna be oh, almost stolen in the bottom lane. Khalid chased down under the turret. Oh, it's gonna be a dive. The healing not there, deja vu. Picking up a kill down below. Spear of Alpha will hit her though. She will be able to get the revitalized down. Is she gonna be able to survive against two Ooh. members? No, it'll be Sula to take the kill down below. Even with that revitalized in the tanky emblem set and just a Hilda overall, you get overloaded, you're still gonna go down, right? And you can only run away for so long eventually till you run out of gas. So with that, at least it gets Ukraine on the board. They can go ahead and get some response to what Mongolia has done so far. And like you mentioned, you know, part of this, even for Sula, is to go ahead and set that pacing. Usually, we always say, you know, this alpha has that advantage. You can get rolling really quickly. And I think so far, it's just kind of closing the gap. It's not a huge gap, right? We're not talking about anything crazy in terms of the gold lead. And they're actually going to be in a good position to go into the second turtle. You can see this, too. Amaturu, she has the... Frigid Glacier herself. Whoa. So Luke's actually going to have to defensively use that. There's their lockdown. Pull up Frigid Glacier into the Raging Sandstorm. Whoa. Three members caught, but it's all in the full barrage. Mott Psycho free hitting the back line on the Ixia. Turning it wow. around. Amaterasu with a flicker out, but Nanoxin will chase her down under the tier two. 14 seconds for the turtle, and three members of Ukraine have just been eliminated. They're going to go into the mid lane before they go to the turtle, and they'll be able to claim a tier one off of that massive team fight win. What a setup with the Frigid Glacier. I mean, I know we saw the first one coming out, you know, because of the Valentina ult from Amaratsu. She started it up, but then there was a response, and then into the full barrage. What a perfect placement that was, you know, and just able to secure themselves three kills 
now they get the objective off of it, that is a great setup. But you can already see, right, the gold earned here really up top. And this is what we have to watch out for if you're if you're rooting for Ukraine. This Ixia doesn't pop up too often in competitive play, but when it does, it serves the purpose. Mind you as well, she's running the Warcry emblem, so she gets a little bit of that extra burst damage when they do get, you know, that perfect setup, and they lock down here. Reggie Sandstorm to disengage, saving on Materasu. There's a bit of peel there down below as Mongolia continue to just farm up. The Noxen at this point, oh, Hopkins Peter Valmas is able to escape. Glorious pathway slowing her down, but on the Nolan, you're a bit too elusive. You're, oh, what happened up top, Ethan? Picking up a kill up top there on the Aurora four-man gank. I'm telling you, you know, this, the lockdown that is provided with an Aurora is really hard to escape, especially when the fact that, you know, Asila, she doesn't oh, have the flicker. So she takes a couple shots with the turret. She's gonna be fine. Should be able to heal that up too. But also that tier one now top side goes down because of that kill that they just got on Celia. So it looks like Mongolia really playing that macro game, looking for the wins here where they can across the map. And notice how they're traveling, right? For the most part, Mom Psycho, she just goes and rolls with the team and she's she's well protected. Again, when you have a Ganakancha, you know that you've essentially got a bodyguard that you can work with here. So they're gonna force this out again. Uh -oh. Khalid's gonna run. Here's not gonna land. Defensive use of the Raging Sandstorm. They're gonna jump in. Defensive use of the AOG, but unfortunately, no kill there. It was also a glorious pathway defensively. Meanwhile, again, Acelia forced to use the flicker up top. Unfortunate stuff here. Purple level gonna be taken away, invaded. And it is perfect timing for Nanoxin to get that level of advantage. The turtle has just spawned the game. Gantat Kacha again, just zoning in the bottom lane. They won't be able to get the turret, but I think this is just more of a setup to get face. Oh, there's a lockdown. Ooh, full barrage too. Interesting. And a flicker onto the back. Khalid will suffer a little bit, taking a lot of damage. Spear of Alpha defensively. They aren't actually going to go for the turtle. It's a free tier two, free tier one down below. And then they can just go to the yeah. turtle right now. That's the game plan. And as you saw, you know, I know Mom Psycho used the flicker there too. She also just picked up the Sea Halbert, and that deals with some of the healing oh, yeah. that's obviously gonna come out through Ukraine's draft here, plus the Revitalize. The Revitalize has just been such a good tool for Mongolia. It has. The double. The double. The double, <laughs> the revitalize. double revitalize. Once you deal with one, right, once you get anyone low, and you've crossed the first time, the first duration of the first Revitalize, there's another yeah. one that comes in, and on top of that, they just have so much peel. That's nice layer. They got a layer taunt from uh, the Gata Kacha, they obviously have, I don't know if you want to call this peel too, but I would say Hilda is kind of good peel. Uh, not in the normal sense with CC, but just yeah. with pure damage. You're just hitting people away from your carries. And on top of that, there's an Aurora. Th that's th always there to peel from Mob Psycho. <laughs> and then if you do get caught by the freeze, full barrage up on you. Yeah, you th there's what almost three? two one. Whoa, Acelia going down again. They want to force a fight in the jungle. Uh oh, Sulu gonna be caught. Ring of Sandstorm will be able to connect with the Bridge of Creation too. It was stolen by Amaterasu, but unfortunately, it's not the same as Ethan's Frigid Glacier. So much more damage comboed in together with Deja Vu. Together with Mob Psycho too, and that wasn't even a full barrage. Nice zoom. Yeah, you might be able to copy, you know, the ultimate, but you can't copy the skin. The power of the skin right now <laughs> for Ethan Ari is working out. It's just stronger. It seems to be really doing the lockdown, and I think a big part of it is like you mentioned, man. It's just, you know, you're able to go ahead and peel. You're able to go ahead and stun and freeze and do just so much of crowd control that's making it hard for Ukraine to actually move around anywhere. You know, for the most part, they haven't been able to find a window of opportunity. And you can see how much pressure is here. With the Fracture 2, I thought the mission would do some more. Spear of Alpha now comboed in the Sandstorm, but it's only going to be connecting. Oh, oh. to full barrage! Into the back with the AOG, locking Sula down to get the last few hits to take her down. That's a double for Mob Psycho on this Ixia. See, this lineup from Mongolia is all about layering. It's pretty much at this point, it's a it's a layered cake because you have the lockdown with the Frigid Glacier. We've seen it time and time again, that full barrage. And now you get a DHS locked in from Mob Psycho. That is very troublesome for those tanky members that are supposed to be on the front side here for Ukraine. And it's just seeming that it's really difficult, nearly impossible to actually find a way where they can go front, front to front against Mongolia. Ukraine might have to get a little creative on how they're going to initiate fights or look to cut off the back line. Now they have those tools, you know, they can actually utilize Acelia later on with a Spear of Destruction or even yeah, having that Khalid, you know, Raging Sandstorm from an off angle. 
but because you fall behind 10,000 gold, this is a huge deficit now that you have to kind of come up with a miracle to defend. You will be forced to defend your base. They are working on that tier one in the bottom lane, so they trade. The Lord is taken by Mongolia, and Ukraine wow. will get that turret. First one for them yep. at the 10 minute mark of this game. I mean, it looks bad, right? The trade, obviously, Lord for neutral for a turret down below tier one. But at this point, you have to take a look at it with Ukraine's point of view. It's the only objective. It's the only trade they could do. Yeah. If they fought over for the Lord, they surely would have lost with a 10,000 gold deficit. But even now, it feels like they've already kind of been outscaled by Team Mongolia's composition. The fact that the Iksha that we've been talking about needed the mid to late, needed some more time to get going, and... She got that. She just yeah, she, she didn't she even got need it. time. She she got the snowball. She got the to. snowball early so on. All the items already. Power spike already. And they're managing the waves really, really well. Bottom lane gonna be crashing down. The holding defense still intact though. So Celia should be able to get the few hits that she needs to clear it out. Very well timed. All these holy shields gonna pop too. They're gonna go for this mid side. So all turrets being worked on from all angles. Are they gonna force a fight here? Looking to push in that top side a little bit. And the problem with this is that freeze and that frigid glacier are ready and locked and loaded. They might push in here. Oi. Whoa, flicker. Okay. Flicker already used. Getting a little bit of that shield, but now the mid lane, once again, the focus. AOG catching up into the full barrage to get free, hitting the Rage Sandstorm hits, but everybody has been zoned away. The Spear of Alpha to the front. Sula oh. basically Spear of Alpha in towards the freeze. Now without Sula, how do they defend? It's a base turret up targeting Fallen as well. Whoa, Fracture whoa. assassination from the Maxon. Able to get the kill in the base. That was just a pure dime. Acelia no flicker. Kaxa trying to get an angle to possibly just front line for Acelia. The focus there, Deja Vu walking up front, trying to zone Acelia away. That's the glorious pathway. He kills damage. Maxon again oh. the Fracture. Able to get one more. Now it's Kaxa under this engage. A few more minions that are going to be spawning to delay the end for Ukraine. But Mongolia will stay disciplined. They'll go back into the bottom lane, take it down. Structures on top of kills, freeze. Acelia, no Whoa. flicker. Caught by the full barrage by Mob Psycho. And the crystal surely will fall here. Almost a wipeout. 12 minutes, 17 to 1. Very, very strong showing from Mongolia here. It looks like, you know, they brought to the draft a lineup that requires proper layering and they did just that really showcasing the synergy they have here i mean the double revitalize if that wasn't enough you had so many initiation points so many overlapping of damage profile ultimates i'm not i mean that's even regarding the fact that you have an issue that got the early start that you usually don't get i mean you pick up an Ixia, you know you're going to have a hard time in the early game, but then you shine later on. This time it was from start to finish, where she really got the ball rolling early on. Because I guess, it was, again, it was the team working together to make things work. And it was really hard just for Ukraine, you know, to find a window to catch up and make things come together here for them. Again, a phenomenal game there. Just an absolute stomp. We've just been seeing stomps after stomps here in ISO at day one of women's MLBBIS.